<clears throat> I'm going to make very quick work of example 18 from chapter 8, example set part 3. <clears throat> Researchers would like to estimate the mean cholesterol level of a particular variety of monkeys, often used in laboratory experiments. They want their estimate to be within one milligram per deciliter, the true value at a 95% confidence level. A previous study, and remember, this is kind of the key thing that we talked about in section 8.3, when we have an unknown mean and we're trying to handle its <clears throat> values or whatever, we must work with the concept of a previous study if we're trying to get an estimate of sample size. It's kind of the only way that we're going to have the capability to do this. It's not perfect, but it's kind of what we're going to have to live with. So in this case, we're going to work with a model of earlier study that calculated a <clears throat> sample distribution standard deviation of 5 milligrams. And we're going to go ahead and treat that as if it's the population standard deviation. How can we get our margin of error within then 1 milligram per deciliter? We want something of this nature then. We want our margin of error, I'm going to write ME, less than 1. And our margin of error is nothing more than a z-score multiplied by our standard error. Well, in this case, what are we going to have for our standard error? Our standard error, we're going to use our old sigma value, which is, in this case, 5, and divide it by the square root of m. What's our z value going to be? Well, we want to be at a 95% confidence level. Quick picture. If that's 95% of the data, we want to be at the 0 0.975, should be our location. We want to be at that location, percentile 97.5. And if we run our inverse normal of 0 0.975, this is where we come back with our value on our calculator of 1.96 once we round. So we want our margin of error. We want 1.96 times 5 over the square root of n to be, what, within 1, less than 1. And if we do a little bit quick algebra work, I'll multiply top and bottom by square root of n. I'm going to have 1.96 times 5 is less than the square root of n. Well, 1.96 times 5 is 9.8 less than the square root of n. Solve for n, 9.8 squared. I want that value less than n. 9.8 squared is 96.04. Now, I need my sample size to provide what? A value less than 1. If I went with 96, I'd be just a little bit short of that desired margin of error. I need to always what? Take my sample one more individual, one more unit up. I need n of 97 working with the theory that I am going to build a 99% confidence level and the fact that I'm going to work with the previous study value of 5 milligrams as our standard deviation. So this is kind of how this type of calculation will work when we're working to develop a desired sample size when trying to estimate a population mean.